I'm back from DockerCon 2023, which was in Los Angeles, California in October of 2023. And I want to break down what I think are the major announcements and give some commentary on it. Here we go. Now, there were some big ones and a lot of things that were announced. So we're talking about Docker Scout with general availability. We have Docker AI, which includes multiple different tools and ways you might interact with it. I think it's just their general label for anything that has Gen AI in it. Next Gen Docker Build or Hydro Build, as I they called it, and I like to call it. Docker Debug CLI, Web GPU on Mac was another one. And that isn't the only reason to go to a DockerCon is to get all these product announcements, but it's mostly about the people. And that's why I love to go. I haven't been in four years since the last in real life DockerCon in 2019. It's a much smaller event. It was like 400 instead of 6,000 like we're used to. So it was like a reboot of DockerCon. I could honestly make another 20 minute video talking about all the friends I got to see that I hadn't seen in years all the new captains and all the new Docker employees that I got to meet and learn from these wonderful people at the event. And then of course, the fans that I got to take selfies with all week long. And that was a lot of fun. That's actually my favorite part of DockerCon. But this video is about the announcements. First up is the Docker Scout suite of security tools. And it's a lot. It's been around in early beta and public beta for I'd say at least a year. A couple of acquisitions from Docker helped to bring a lot of the people and expertise and tooling here. They've relabeled everything as Docker Scout. So what is it? Now that it's generally available, what we know that it is today is tools inside of Docker desktop on your local machine, including a CVE scanner, which you might compare to open source ones like Gripe or Trivi. You might compare to other commercial ones like Sneak. I really like Scout in this first release. It is easy to use. It's the Docker space scout command line, and there's a bunch of different options there. It has colors in the CLI. It also has options and features in the Docker desktop dashboard GUI. So you can use either one if you're a command line person or a GUI person. It integrates with Docker Hub, as well as the new build kit attestations if you're into all that security supply chain stuff. It ties all this together and presents a really easy interface to hide the magic of doing several things. One is discovering the vulnerabilities, CVEs, in your images. Two, making recommendations based on that information and based on the provenance information that comes out of BuildKit. You get Docker Scout for three Docker Hub repositories for free. The next real thing there is scout.docker.com. So if you have a Docker Hub account, you will start to see Scout stuff showing up around vulnerabilities in Docker Hub. But whenever you go to scout.docker.com, it shows a lot of data and organization-wide statistics around the vulnerabilities in your images that are maybe out of date in terms of your base images. Maybe you should update Node images or your Python image to the latest version. And all of this stuff comes together to help you with advice around how to reduce the CVE count. In a lot of ways, it's really just recommending new base images, besides just pointing out all the CVE counts, it's recommending new base images that have a different set of CVEs. So it can maybe compare and contrast a little bit for you. The third part of this, so again, we have the local tooling on Docker Desktop, we have the hub tooling or the scout.docker.com. And the third piece is a GitHub action or a basically a suite of integrations, not just GitHub, but a whole bunch of integrations that are gonna plug into Scout the first one out of the gate that I have tried is Docker's GitHub action for Scout. And the one thing this does that I really like and it's pretty unique is it will look at your PR, give you the CVE count of a build of the image in your PR in some code in a GitHub repo, and then has some intelligence to figure out what you're merging, which branch you're merging into and which image that might be. And the difference in the CVE count between your current pull request and the branch you're about to merge into. To me, that's a big game changer because that helps developers at the time of pull request figure out 
if their pull request, when accepted, will increase or reduce the security of the image and the code that's in it. Next up is NextGen Docker Build, or what was codenamed Hydro Build. It is cloud builders because builds locally are maybe slow on an older machine and you may not have all the architectures you need. One of the growing needs is for multi-architecture builds because maybe in production you're on Intel or AMD 64, but you have a lot of Mac developers and they're on ARM 64. So you're going to end up likely building images with multi-platform. If you've ever tried to do that with the built-in emulation or even like I do on GitHub Actions with QEMU emulation, that can be really slow. An order of magnitude slower. I don't know how they're going to price this. I don't know if this is going to be part of your Docker subscription or something in addition, but it basically allows you with a couple of clicks or a couple of commands on your local machine in Docker Desktop to transparently run a Docker build command that will push all of your local source code to their build farm. This is seamless. You use the same Docker commands, you change out the builder destination from local to cloud. What's new is Docker Desktop now allows us to have a GUI to manage our builders and there's a new option to add a cloud builder. This isn't fully released yet, but they do have a way for you to sign up on their website for a preview release. So I'm excited about that one. I should be able to decide that I want to build locally or remotely and the remote being way faster in most cases. That's a cool feature. Next up is the Docker debug CLI that was demoed on stage at one of the keynotes. And we've got the Docker exec. We all know Docker exec. That's one of the first commands we all learn when we learn Docker. This is an option to replace that where you would use right now, at least in its preview form, it's a separate CLI, but I assume that it's going to be built into Docker. So maybe Docker space debug would be the command. We don't know yet. That is going to jump you into the container. It's like side loading or adjacent. It's probably sharing namespaces and PIDs and stuff in the background so that it feels like you're in that native process, but it allows you to use the Nix package manager to install utilities you need without them affecting the current container that's running. I think it might even have options for doing this when the container's not running. Honestly, this feature seems really cool, but we've all built our own workflows around Docker exec. And when you're running locally and you need to debug something locally, you tend to either have a special build of your app with all of the local developer tools that you need, or you just are used to jumping in with Docker Compose exec or just a regular Docker exec, and you know how to get things in there. With the increased need for us to have smaller images, distro lists, chain guard images, although I'll be honest, most people I see developing aren't using those minimal images. Those are really just for production. They have a sort of different stage that they use to develop. So I'm not really sure how well or useful this debug will be over the current situation. What it might be is simply easier for people that don't know all that to get started on their local machine debugging an existing container. It might make more sense if the debug CLI walks them through and it, it has a little splash screen that shows up when you first run it. So maybe that'll be more user-friendly. You can try this today. It's a Docker desktop extension. So you can install that from the extension store, give it a run, check it out. And in this case, one of the major claims that Docker's making is that if you do this method, you don't affect the running container. Essentially, it's like using a different file mount or file partition. So you're not changing anything in the container so that when you leave or you exit the debug session, the container hasn't been augmented. It's in no way different than before. So that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. What they did say on stage is that a feature that will be coming later is that it will be able to debug Kubernetes. That might mean I can use my local Docker CLI to quickly jump into a cluster that I have API access to and debug it without additional local tooling to do that. Again, most Kubernetes people already have commands that they're used to using. We have the new ephemeral containers and people have their processes. So I'm not exactly sure how successful Docker will be at getting everyone to use their debug CLI inside of Docker desktop to do all this stuff. But I'm hopeful that it will be more useful than maybe some of the stuff we have now. Next up, WebGPU, which I had not even heard of or knew that it was a thing 
But WebGPU is a standard around giving browsers direct GPU access through OS APIs like Direct3D, Metal, and Vulkan. All we know is that Docker is set up for WebGPU and that we can take advantage of GPUs regardless of our operating system or GPU hardware, assuming they had compatible drivers. Today, this is all very OS specific. So for example, today with Docker Desktop, you can use GPUs in Windows, but only in Windows. And that's because the Windows team enabled that for the WSL2 that Docker's using in the background. On Mac, you don't get to use GPUs in Docker Desktop today because it's just running a hypervisor VM inside of Mac. So what this specific feature for universal GPU access is going after Mac first. So the demo we saw on stage was Docker Desktop on Mac taking advantage of the, I believe, Apple Silicon GPUs. I'm not sure if they described exactly which GPUs those were, but they showed the performance benefits that were just coming out of the box. This is not a shipped feature yet. I don't really have a lot of other, other details. So as this comes to fruition, you will hear more. Next up is the Docker AI suite of tools. And this, I felt like in demos, showed up in two ways. The first one was the Gen AI stack, which essentially means Docker will provide third-party tooling like Olama and various other things that are listed on their website, like Neo4j and Langchain. These tools are gonna to be bundled in containers and that Docker will provide guidance and easier install and setup of all these things inside of Docker. So I think maybe that was related to the web GPU announcement that in order for them to do this in Docker, Docker has to be able to take advantage of the GPUs. So once all of these features are finished, then the idea would be is we can install Docker desktop. A couple of clicks later, we could have a full LLM setup for all the Gen AI stuff that would take advantage of our GPUs, but not require a bunch of local installing of tooling on our OS. It would simply just be all in Docker. It could be transportable between machines. You get the idea. The other half of this is something they're calling Docker Assist. And we got a demo on stage, but I have not been able to get hands on with this yet. This is interesting because it's in VS Code, at least at first, maybe for other editors later. But like all of the LLMs we've seen, like Copilot, this is in VS Code and it's aware of Docker commands, Docker files, compose files, anything in the Docker ecosystem of tooling. And it uses a notebook format. I think this could especially be useful to people learning Docker. And if it's as good as what their early preview showed, I'll probably make all of my students coming through the course for the first time through Docker and my Docker mastery to install this because it seems like a no brainer. Like why wouldn't I want a virtual assistant helping me learn the commands better than the dash help does for all of us that are used to that. And lastly, the other big announcement there from Docker was launching something called open pub key. It's more of a standard and it's early days for signing container artifacts. So container images, possibly other related artifacts in the future, like compose files, Helm charts. I'm not sure exactly what their scope is, but this is more of an idea that they're starting with. In my newsletter, I linked to a great article for the pros and cons on this from an industry expert, Dan Lorick, who is a part of the SigStore project, which is technically going to be a competitor to the standard. And it's interesting because there are pros and there are cons to both solutions. And they have certain pieces to the puzzle and signing and guaranteeing that the image you built is the image you're running. That's the, one of the reasons for all this signing stuff in containers and artifacts. And Docker, I think, is trying to make this new way. They partnered with the Linux Foundation, which is interesting. It's because it's now a Linux Foundation project. And Bastion Zero, another supply chain security company, which I don't really know much about. And we're just gonna have to wait and see on this one. We probably won't have anything useful to use that's easy and commonplace and accepted by lots of other tooling, I'm gonna guess for at least a year. Like this kind of thing tends to take time. There's a lot of people needing to be involved and then other tooling has to catch up with these new standards. There's honorable mentions of things at the conference like Docker Compose got a new watch feature that has been in beta or alpha for a while and that's finally released. 
So we can now watch files in Docker Compose and it will automatically either rebuild your container or restart your container or sync files into your container without needing bind mounts, without needing extra tools for all that. So I'm very excited. I've made a YouTube short about this and talked about it in my newsletter as well. The other thing is Docker Compose Publish, which I haven't talked about yet, but allows you to send your Compose files and store them on Docker Hub for easy sharing. They made a little announcement about Udemy partnership, which I guess is good for me since I have all my Docker courses on Udemy. We'll have to wait and see what really comes out of that. But I think it really just means that people, Docker captains, people making Docker content, if they go through this program, will get a stamp of approval from Docker and hopefully help promote their courses on the Udemy platform. So there was a lot more that happened at DockerCon, but those are the big announcements. I'll see you in the next one.